So, um, it's been a sort of quiet week on my personal end, but uh, a sort of noisy week on a few other fronts. Um, at Agoras and Axis, we're releasing four new episodes this week. We've already released three of them, and there's one more coming tomorrow, so be, f- be sure to uh, subscribe to that and, like, you know, tick all the notification bells, all that sort of thing. Um, but ultimately, uh, you've still been getting, like, hours of content from me this week. The difference between this week and other weeks is that I've been preparing for a bunch of things and, uh, getting a bunch of things done in the background. That being said, A, I owe (laughs) a sponsor a certain amount of brand integrations, and I'm not gonna let him down, uh, and B, uh... The uh, content machine still needs to roll for me to be able to do my weekly audience engagement. Uh, But you might have noticed something odd about this footage, and that is that it's (laughs) higher quality now. Uh, One of my uh, biggest supporters, um, Laylee, and one of the uh, the, the longtime uh, viewers of my content, uh, decided to uh, get me a better uh, hard drive, well, solid state in this particular case, and also a better camera. So, uh, shout out to Rescind, um, and I will definitely use them in good health. Uh, but ultimately, the whole um, the whole content machine relies on certain things, and uh, those things I'm going to get out of the way, which are uh, you can support Agris Nexus in general using the free link in the description to sign up for pre search. You can support me. Uh, by getting the book in the description, which is Brushfire 2048, uh, a, a sequel to a book written by a guy who has sponsored me before. Uh, it's all about what the future has in store if the tyranny keeps up the way it's going. Um, and it couldn't be at a better time, especially near Christmas. So if you got a conspiracy theorist in your life, get him that book. Um, but ultimately, there's those things, and there's also... Uh, Texas-based private investigator Liberty Professionals who can help you with remote security consultations even if you're not in Texas and also can help you uh, secure your home, small business, and life if you are. Like, all that stuff is ACES board certified and uh, long-time uh, supporter, long-time uh, viewer, and also uh, many, many years of experience in that field. So all the information for all those things is in the description. Check them out, support the content, all that stuff. Um, but now that the housekeeping is out of the way, basically, um, you know, I'll, I'll put in a little thing that you can skip to this part of the video if you wanted to get this content specifically. The, uh, the things that I were predicting years ago you know, those things are coming true, and um, I just need to tell you that uh, the the Fed is literally starting to uh, do what I said that they were going to do this whole time, and the the Fed in New York is starting to bring out programmable dollars, and uh, and I thought I would bring this up just to go over the fact that A, I was right again. And B, it's directly something that I had referenced in my article many, many years ago. It's like two or three years ago at this point. Um, so I thought I'd go over all that. This is an article on Zero Hedge. Now, before anybody gets into anything here, yeah, it's dark mode. I have that forced in my browser. Um, you can use dark mode in Chromium-based browsers if you know where to look. So, uh, yeah, it's in dark mode. That doesn't mean it's some fucking alteration. I have literally people talking to me about that sometimes. But ultimately, um, the the New York Fed is, like, starting the thing that I've been saying was going to happen, which is that they're testing, testing the digital dollar. Now, what would the digital dollar be? Uh, <laughs> Uh, it is the ID2020 alliance and uh, the Accenture blockchain and all that sort of thing. It's what they've been building for years. It's what I brought up as soon as these projects came to light. And it's ultimately 
um, what uh, what what I've been called insane for, but it's saying uh, that the uh, Citigroup, HSBC Holdings, Mastercard, and Wells Fargo are among the financial companies participating in the experiment alongside the New York Fed, which will provide a public contribution to the body of knowledge on the application of new technology to the regulated financial system. Lots of gish galloping jargon there. But uh, Bank of New York Mellon, the money laundering bank of the world, HSBC Holdings, PNC Financial Services, Toronto Dominion Bank, Trist Financial and U.S. Bank Corp. are also participating in the test, along with Payments Network MasterCard. The project, which is called the Regulated Liability Network, will allow banks to simulate issuing digital money representing their customers' own funds before settling through central bank reserves on a distributed ledger, the New York Fed said. Distributed ledger. Like the blockchain I've been saying that they were building for years in order to specifically regulate everything. Specifically control fucking everything. The pilot will test how banks using digital dollar tokens in a common database can help speed up payments. Uh, quote, programmable U.S. dollars may be necessary to support new business models and provide a foundation to much-needed innovation in financial settlements and infrastructure. Tony McLaughlin, Managing Director for Emerging Payments and Business Development at Citigroup's Treasury and Trade Solutions Division, said in a statement Tuesday, Projects like this, that focus on the digitization of central bank money and individual bank deposits, could be expanded to take a broader view of the opportunity. In that fucking grand, guys? Wow, you can really see, like, every annoying hair that's, like, every out of place with this camera. Um, anyway, the point is that, uh, <laughs> they've been building this for years. For years, Wall Street, uh, biggest banks have exploited the use of blockchain in their businesses from everything from interbank payments to mortgages and cross-border trades. Still, this week's move comes amid a rout in cryptocurrency markets following the collapse of Sam Bankman-Fried's digital asset empire this week. So, MasterCard. Y'all who have been subscribed to this content know that MasterCard was directly uh, involved and heavily involved in the FIDO Alliance, that organization of um, mega-corporate banking and government in institutes, that organization of mega-corporate banking and uh, government organizations, which is seeking to form a unified ID of everything connected to your social media, your banking, all of it. And it was all sort of like snuck in with things like LastPass and uh, YubiKey and things like that, saying, hey... Trust us. Uh, put all your digital identities under one banner and use our specific thing instead of anything else and make sure that when you do that, you use code I'm a slave for 100% off your freedom. Um, because MasterCard has been pushing for financial tyranny for some time. And notice that these banks are the same banks that have been like, you know, censoring people who disagree with their politics, trying to control people who do things they don't like. You know, it's almost like these banks have been pushing for the kinds of centralized tyranny that the Fed and the government it supports would uh, thrive with. So now, they're building the thing that I've been saying they would build for years. And uh, when did I start saying this, like, in article form? Because I've been saying this for even longer than this has been out. When did I say that? Well, I wrote a nice little piece here called Panop Panopticon Rising, COVID-19 and the Elite Enslavement Plan. And I wrote that in March 2020. So nearly three years ago, I was already talking about all this. And what did I say? Well, oh well, um... Let's look at a side project of one of the ID2020 founders, Accenture. 
the Digital Dollar Project. Their claim in bold letterhead on their official site is that they're leading the discussion on a U.S. central bank digital currency. They claim to ensure the dollar can survive the broadest possible range of uses in an increasingly digital global economy and thereby maintain its privileged position and support orderly adjustment into international monetary relations, consideration needs to be given to plans to adopt a digital dollar issued by the Federal Reserve System. Their project directors include David Freet, Senior Manager, Managing Director, Co-Lead of Accenture's Blockchain Business, and Accenture's Lead of the New York Fintech Innovation Lab. Funny! Accenture Blockchain, attached to a universal blockchain-based identification system, reliant on prints and facial recognition, is being pushed as a way to help administer vaccines. It's set up for release in a year which so happens to have an overhyped pandemic unnecessarily overloading the healthcare system and being used as an excuse to push martial law. The pandemic is also being used as an excuse to amp up defense production to a fascist degree, with the idea of suspension of habeas corpus being seriously kicked around. While people are indoors, infrastructure is being installed which would enable government to widely implement 5G, a thing used in China in order to mass control the population. This 5G is used there to enable a facial tracking biometrics-ready superstate control grid. This comes out alongside the Earn IT Act, banning encryption, that I discussed in my encryption article. All of it came out exactly a year into a campaign by many social media giants and governments to mock and silence anyone even remotely anti-vax, anti-5G, or really anti-government at all. A most recent high-profile example being Zero Hedge, it happened after Den Denver International Airport remodeled, covering the murals they'd had up for years, which appeared to depict mass death prior to world government and peace, after they installed a laughing gargoyle to mock truthers. It happened a year after Bilderberg's topics were a stable strategic order, what's next for Europe, climate change and sustainability, China, Russia, the future of capitalism, Brexit, the ethics of artificial intelligence, the weaponization of social media, the importance of space, and cyber threats. So, you know, I was right. I was right, and it's coming right now. It's happening here. It's going to be here probably next year. And we're all being transitioned onto this system. That's what's happening right here, right now. So there are a bunch of people who were telling me that they doubted me, or that it didn't matter, or that I was exaggerating, or something, or something, or something, right? There were a lot of people who were telling me that I was some insane tinfoil conspiracy theorist. Because they had no argument against the facts that I was already presenting, and because they had no proof that I was wrong. Meanwhile, what I was saying was proven accurate time and time again for years. And it's happening now. Any politician that doesn't have a plan to deal with these, doesn't have a plan to reject this new monetary order, doesn't give a fucking shit about your liberty. So a Republican, a Democrat, especially a Libertarian, that doesn't have a plan to refuse this, doesn't have a problem uh, with this system at all, or in any <laughs> meaningful enough context to do jack shit about it, those politicians are hypocrites at absolute best, and evil at worst. So keep that in mind whenever people talk about, this is the most important election of our lifetime, because... Those politicians, last time, they would have much rather discussed literally fucking anything else than your freedom being flushed by a financial system that has been building up for years the ability to universally track, monitor, and control you. And if you don't see this as, at the very least, evil, and in my particular opinion, the mark of the beast, I don't know what to tell you. It's marks in your face and hand that you can't buy or sell without. Biometric data being weaponized against people as a way to universally track and control them 
sounds an awful lot like the mark of the fucking beast to me. Doesn't it? And it, even if it's not, even if it's not that, even if that's hyperbole, the fact that it's even close should be considered a severe fucking problem. Should it not? So, petition your legislators, you know? Talk to your local town halls and all that sort of thing to get this message in front of them at the very least. But, you know, ultimately, talk to your friends, your family, your neighbors, any, anybody you care about. Get them on board with opposing this because we need opposition now. We needed it yesterday. We needed it years ago. We needed it during this whole fucking buildup. Instead of people calling people like me insane. Even now, people still don't accept the full gravity of the situation. Even fucking now. People have been so propagandized. People have been so beaten down by the system. That they are unwilling to accept that the most important issue has been on the table and not discussed by these mainstream politicians. You know what they wanted to discuss? Trans issues. You know what they wanted to discuss? Fucking abortion. You know what they wanted to discuss? Ooh, drag queen story hour. You know what they wanted to discuss? Anything worthless. That's what they want to discuss. Because if they wanted to discuss the meat and potatoes, the real shit that affected your freedom, they would be opposing this. And the ultimate truth is that they work for the system that wants this, and that's why they're not saying shit! And that's the reason that they won't say shit. That's the reason that they will consistently support this sort of thing, or at least not oppose it in any meaningful sense, because they are the system. And because they rely on the system for their fucking paycheck and to continue gaining power, and to continue being a cult of personality. That's why they won't do jack-fucking-shit for your freedom, because they won't even pay attention to the important issues now, much less at any other point where it fucking matters. And people wonder why I'm so negative. Well, maybe it's because I see... An encroaching panopticon that's approaching faster than ever, and I just want people to oppose this as their primary thrust until we get rid of this sort of thing so that we can fucking smash the fucking state.